Hello and welcome. Today I will be playing a ship that's still a work in progress, which means that all her stats are still subject to change. Also note that this is my first impression of the ship, which means that um, it might not be the most accurate because I have only played six games in her. The ship in question is the Oktyabrskaya Revolutsiya, or the October Revolution, which by the way happened in November. She's also known as Gangut, and I expect that she will mostly be called Gangut because it's much easier to pronounce, you see, Oktyabrskaya Revolutsiya is a bit of a mouthful. So what is this thing? Well, she's basically an improved Nikolai. She doesn't quite have the same turret configuration, but she does have 12 guns, and they are 305mm caliber. And, um, well, she just feels like an upgraded version, although she does have slightly more superstructure, which the Nikolai seems to mostly lack. Now, she does have anti-air, which is a major increase, and, um... She also has a fairly wicked armor scheme, which I will show at the end of the uh, video. Now, she does have one massive problem, and that massive problem is that she is tier 5. And the problem there is that tier 5 has tier 5 matchmaking, surprise surprise, which mostly seems to put you into tier 6 and 7 games where you don't have as much fun as you would like to really have. The Nikolai does not run into this problem. You see, Nikolai's matchmaking is plus minus one tier, whereas the uh, Gangut's is minus one and plus two. This is a tier seven match. However, the only ship that seemed to have come on this side of the map that was tier seven was the Algeri. Now there's only two cruisers and a battleship left, and they're all, all tier five. I think that the uh, Gangut is going to be a... Uh, fairly good cruiser hunter because well first of all her damage output right she has 12 guns that are fairly accurate and due to her lower caliber you know it's very well suited for hunting cruisers like this emerald for instance she just took two citadels and one penetration for a nice 20,000 damage now it's just time to try to finish her off now on top of that she also has something else that's going to be very strong versus cruisers not necessarily British cruisers, except the Belfast, that is. And that is, uh, the Gangot has 38mm of deck armor pretty much everywhere. You see, there's a small um, part at the front and a small part at the rear that's 19mm, but pretty much everything else is 38mm. Now, that combined with her fairly small superstructure to her size means that um, cruisers will find it rather difficult to deal... HE penetration damage to the ship, which means that she is very well um, suited to be able to fight them. So if you run into like a Belfast, she can't do the same thing with her IFHE HE spam that she can to most of the other battleships, especially the higher tier ones like the Nagato. So in that kind of a scenario, she's very very good at fighting them. However, there is one other thing, and might be her biggest oddity and that is her damage control party check that out so look the damage control party has a little number in the corner and it lasts for 15 seconds but the little number means that you have five charges that is what if you have a superintendent and you know the premium consumable however your cooldown on damage control party is literally 20 seconds which means that you can cycle your damage control parties really really quickly However, it has a massive downside as well attached to it, and that is, once you run out, you're out. You don't have any damage control party anymore. It doesn't revert back to like a, a different form of damage control party or anything. You're just done. You don't have a single damage control party anymore. So you can't, you know, use it for anything. So you have to pay a lot of attention to when you use your damage control party. However, this does mean that... Uh, you're going to be very strong against fighting against certain types of cruisers. At least I think so. So, I'm gonna keep pushing now, which is actually something quite not standard in standard battle, because, well, look at the minimap, right? The enemy Colorado and Dunkirk, which are these, their stronger battleships, are on the other side of the map that are pushing 
seemingly towards our base. So I'm gonna just push towards theirs. And uh, remember I mentioned how good her guns are gonna be for cruisers. Look at this. Look, broadside Königsberg. And unfortunately I did very little damage. Never mind. Okay, so I'm gonna try again, obviously. But that was a bit of a failure. I guess I could not find her citadel appropriately. Although only three shells actually landed. Now, I think that on Gangot, um, the way you're going to use your damage control party is going to be very important. Because if you run out and you get, you know, flooded or on fire, you have nothing anymore. However, you know, the upside of having many damage control parties available in a quick succession is kind of worth it. And right now I'm struggling and I think I'm going to use it anyway because, well, there's just no reason to keep this fire damage going since I'm probably not going to be set on fire like four times again. And I don't really expect to be torpedoed in a way that I will be flooded. You know, it's always nice to keep at least, I think, three as a backup on the ship. Or, you know, maybe at least two. So now I'll keep sailing towards the opposing team. I have to say that the ship is basically, like I've mentioned, an upgraded version of the Nikolai, right? You have more range, you have, well, you have anti-air. You have slightly less health, but, um, you know, the other things, you have a faster reload. It's 32 seconds versus 36, so you can output more damage. However, of course, you know, it's not like an incredible ship because fighting those tier 7 battleships is going to be very difficult. In fact, fighting even battleships on your tier is going to be somewhat difficult because you just don't have that amazing penetration power. You only have 305mm caliber guns. So, there's a New York over there, and I actually swapped to the HE shells here because... You do have 12 shells and they do have a 33% fire chance. So against battleships, it is pretty nice to fire HE because you do tend to hit a fair few shells and they do quite often cause fires. But I'm only going to fire one HE salvo on that New York because she is AFK, so there's no reason to... Oh, and I got two fires in four, four shells. I think that's quite lucky. But that does mean that since she is AFK, she's gonna take a lot of damage from those fires. And I don't want to waste more resources on it. I'm swapping back to AP and my next target is going to be that Dukadosta or Graf Spe. You know, Dukadosta is in that direction, but since she is not visible, it's going to be the Graf Spe first. Remember, the shells on the ship are fairly slow, so you, you do need to lead by a fair bit. And, you know, the dispersion is what it is. From time to time, that is, as you saw. Now, the ship is incredibly maneuverable, as you will notice soon. You see, the ship has a gun configuration of one gun at the front, pointing fr towards the front. Second gun points towards the rear, the third gun towards the front, and the rear gun towards the rear again. Which means you only can fire one gun to the front, but I want to fire more, and I'm gonna fire on this Tukadosta like this. I fired th three of the turrets. However, look at how close I got to this island, but I'm turning away, and I'm not going to run aground here. Because this ship is incredibly maneuverable. Look at this, I avoided it. I avoided this island from this close of a range. Now, of course, you have to account for the fact that the ship is fairly slow, so, you know... It's not exactly moving at a very fast speed to be able to not dodge. Now, the Dukadosta that's coming around the island might have torpedoes or might not. It's hard to say. Um, I'm probably going to be able to take her out. I mean, she's at 5 kilometers and she is made of paper. And um, I happen to have some very good paper shredders. Goodbye, Dukadosta. However, she still might have got her tarps off, so I have to be somewhat careful. Now, I do have damage control party available, obviously. And I don't think I'm actually going to use all of them. So, I guess I will be heading towards the Graf Spee again to try to fight her. Now the question is, which side the Graf Spee is going to go on the big island? Is she going to keep going towards their side or is she going to turn in? 
It seems that she's turning in by the looks on the minimap. And yep, she seems to be turning in, which means that um, I'm also gonna sail towards the middle because I want to fight more ships rather than win quickly through capping. And I tell this to my teammates as well, that, um, you know, taking the ships out and actually sinking them is going to give us slightly more experience. Now, I don't think the Emily would get more experience because she probably isn't going to get that much more damage done. However, I might be able to. And, you know, I have four kills, so I want my fifth one, right? For the Kraken, which I actually can't get because it's a test ship, but, you know, please let me dream. Okay, unfortunately there is this big fat island in the way and sadly Soviet battleship shells can't quite over penetrate, never mind. I wanted to say that they can't quite over penetrate islands, however this New Mexico just took out the Graf Spe, so I couldn't even touch her. So I guess now there is only the um, König and the um, Colorado left, I don't know what that Colorado is doing. I suspect that she's like AFK or something, because why would she be on that map edge like that for such a long time? I also swapped to HE because, uh, well, I'm gonna fight the battleship and I can't really penetrate her very well, at least, you know. On top of that, she's a German battleship, so I can't settle her anyway. So I'm just gonna try my luck with HE. I think I'm more likely to get fires and... Uh, have some fire damage going rather than anything else. Okay, let's see. Hit for... I hit the nice six shells and I did a good 6,000 damage and got the fire. I actually shot some HE at the Nagato earlier in an earlier match and I did like 9,000 alpha damage. It was quite amazing, especially since she only shot me back for like 6,000. On the other hand though, it kind of hurt when she settled me later for half my HP. But let's not talk about that one, okay? So, more HE on the König, and there's a nice second fire that will be taking away. And hopefully, we will be able to get some more damage done. Yeah, I have to say that Colorado does seem to be AFK. Which I suppose is pretty bad for the enemy team, considering they had an AFK in New York as well. I'm not quite sure if that would have turned the game, but it might have. Especially the Colorado one. I don't know what that Colorado was doing. Like, how did she how did she sell so far while being AFK? And how come literally nobody seemed to have shot her? Because she is at completely full HP. Anyways, nothing much happens here, so let's go towards the end. And, well, there's the game. And look at this beautiful shot, ruined by that ugly work-in-progress one. Regardless, the game's over. And, uh, a nice game, though. 128,000 damage, 7 citadels, 4 ships sunk, 4 fires. For a tier 5 battleship, that's pretty good. Although this And 1,800 base experience, and number 2 is a 1,300. Although I have to say, this is the best game I had in this ship. But, you know, it's only 6 games. Um... And, you know, I did 20,000 to the New York and not that much to the Colorado either, so at least 100,000 of this damage is going to be, you know, against other targets that I actually fought. However, I did fight quite um, favorable battles to me, considering, you know, I fought cruisers and stuff. So this is the Oktyabrska Revolucja in the port, and as I mentioned, she is fairly similar to what the Nikolai is. Um, she has 12 guns, 305mm at 32 second reload, the Nikolai has basically the same except 36 second reload. The damage output is the same, although the uh, Gangut does have more range. Now in terms of survivability, uh, HP is slightly lower than what the Nikolai has. Uh, Torpedo, yeah, like, these are minor differences. Now, the Gankut does have anti-air. Most of these guns deal very little damage. However, this one does 91, which is, you know, somewhat okay for um, a tier 5 ship. Um, she definitely does not get anything from manual anti-air. 
That is, she might get something, but it's very minor. Her maneuverability is very excellent. 630 meter turning circle with a 12 second rudder shift. Only 23 knots though, but this is a very maneuverable ship. Her concealment is 11.4 kilometers, but this is with concealment expert. You see I'm using a 10 point captain that I currently use on my Moskva. Next I'll take the advanced firing training. I guess it'll be useful on Gangot as well. Now in terms of modules, I'm just running um, no, the standard main arms modification 1 and then at uh, anti-air range because she does have anti-air and it's somewhat useful. You could run aiming systems modification but I figured uh, right now. Maybe I'll try it later. And damage control systems modification is obviously nice as well. So the main thing is though that you do have this damage control party that has charges. I think on this ship you have to absolutely run premium damage control party. Even if you never do, you must run it on this one because you get an extra charge and superintendent is incredibly important on this ship as well because when you run out of these charges, you're done. You don't have any damage control parties anymore. So you have to be very careful with the... Now let's look at the armor model for a moment. This is what the armor model looks like and like I said, she has a pretty wicked armor model in that this is a 125mm plate and this sits slightly above the waterline. And this is a 100mm plate, the middle one is 225 and this upper one is 125 as well. With the fore one being 75 only. Now this is the 19mm plate I was talking about earlier, but look it's only a very small one at the front. And I guess it's slightly bigger at the rear, but the middle one, deck armor is to all 38mm. And there's only a few points of superstructure, right? Like this structure here, this middle one, and this at the back. So it's not that easy to actually try to HE pen her, which is fairly interesting. So let's jump down. Let's let's look at her citadel. Um, this is basically her citadel, right? So the citadel isn't actually that armored. 19 millimeter on one side, 12 at the deck citadel part. However, if you look at no, wrong one. If you add this one on, it does appear to have like a, like a deck armor. This is 38mm, that is uh, what you call a turtleback. But I'm not quite sure if this is what you would call a turtleback. I'm not really much somebody that knows much about this stuff. So in terms of arm being armored, the ship actually looks fairly good. Anyways, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I would like to thank the Patreons on Patreon. Thank you very much for your continued support, Yamineko. And I hope I'll see you guys next time.